Harry, this is a fantastic film, and you play a Cockney geezer in it, I don't do you? Love. Yeah, I do love, yeah. <laughs> so what? Now, but you're for Devon originally, aren't you? So how did you find doing the accent? Well, um, I, it was fine. I, I've lived in London for eight years, so hopefully some of that's worn off, yeah. And uh, you and Rasmus play brothers in the film, yes. don't you? And you're always getting him into trouble. In fact, it's a really funny little montage where he shows all those moments. I what is it like? Fingers during that montage. Yeah, end of the first week. It's disappointing. How did that happen? Uh, running away from some of Andy's um, kind of uh, assailants. I was going to ask you, what, what do you what do you like in real life with your own brother? Uh, uh, Are you also getting him into trouble all the time? No, I don't. No, no, not anymore. You're very well behaved. So yes. Now, um, who was the most mischievous person on set? Because obviously it's a film that has a really good vibe about having a great atmosphere on set in it. No, he, he was, I mean, he was amazing. He would be sat in his deck chair and he'd be like, Richard, going to do a take. And he'd be like, just up, do it. And completely incredible, do it in one. And uh, we were all just like, right, that's how you do it. Were you, were you there? Did you see the um, scene where he's uh, powering a Zimmer frame, being chased by zombies? Yeah, yeah. We, I think. Well, I think we were. Make, I think we were hightailing it across London at that point. Um, but yeah, I've, I've seen it, and I think it's hilarious. I think an Uzi and a Zimmer frame is a combination that should happen. You know what I mean? Talking about weapons, if there were a zombie apocalypse, what would be your weapon of choice? I don't know. A drone to just follow them around and sort of. I'd go aerial probably, or, or a big plane with massive bombs. I don't know. If there was. They're sketchy. I don't like this whole... I mean, it's pretty arm-to-arm uh, -arm combat. I, I wouldn't... I'd prefer to not get that close, do you know what I mean? Do you think... Because James has got a whole plan, the rise for the film, a whole plan to so start how it work. Do you think you'd be good in, in, in a zombie outbreak? Uh, what if I found uh, Mental Mickey's lockup and uh, found the ridiculous level of uh, ammunition they had in there? Then I think I'd feel safe. Otherwise, I don't know. Might move to the continent. Do you know what I mean? Go to France. Nice. Tell me a little bit about the camaraderie on set. I think that's part of the story. Why the script was appeal so appealing was because there is this 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 lovely connection between the the you know the older generation and the younger generation. And so you put that in the story, then you have to achieve that. So therefore, you do have this older group of actors and a younger group of actors. And so you you're kind of, there's a symmetry to what's going on in the story, and it's and it's sweet and it's quite rare to kind of have that gap. Often, you know, you might play you play with a, uh, children and parents, or it's parents, it's an older thing. But to, it's a cool it was a cool dynamic to have to have them definitely. I know you've learned you've learned many kind of things for previous roles you've had, whether it be the drums or what have you. Was there anything you had to learn for Cockneys versus Zombies? Uh, kebab skewering a zombie with a samurai sword. That was that took, that was 20 minutes. Only that's what it takes. 20 minutes. And uh, you'll be an expert. What can we look forward to coming up next from you? I know you've been working on The Lone Ranger, haven't you? Um, I've been doing The Lone Ranger. I did a, a thing in South Africa uh, called Fly to the Storks, um, which is uh, a two-part TV thing. And then there's Lone Ranger, which is Disney's big epic Western, which has been a truly amazing experience so far. We're still finishing it, so there's a little bit of time left. So, um, in terms of um, Lone Ranger, when can we look forward to that, do you think? And, and I think next year. And um, you had it like a, a six-week cowboy camp for that as well, talking about learning things? Yeah we, yeah, we had to learn to ride horses for that, so that was that was amazing. Yeah. Was it something you took to naturally? Did it feel like you've, you've always been connected to a horse? I, I, I don't know. I think it's different from playing cowboy when you're when you're a kid. But um, you know, it was it was certainly uh, I felt very hu humbled and privileged to be, to get to learn to ride. So yeah. We look forward to lots more from you, Harry. And thanks so much for talking to us. You take care.